Okay, so uh, we are going to talk today about uh, a little bit more of this idea of an optimization problem as it relates specifically to business. Uh, we looked a little bit about inventory costs in the last section, so I, you know that has to do with business as well. Um, but we're going to look at specifically cost, revenue, and profit today. So um, you've read the section, so I just want to point out a couple things about the section that are kind of important. So um, let's define a couple of these functions. So the C of X is the cost, is our cost function. And this cost, this C of X would be the cost of producing X units of whatever good we're doing. So remember it's important when you're dealing with a function to understand what is your input. In this case, it's whatever I want to make. <laughs> um, you know, if I'm wanting to make math is fun t-shirts, that would be the number of math is fun t-shirts that I want to make. And this then I would put in, let's say if I want 100 t-shirts, C would, C would spit out the amount of money it would cost me to make those t-shirts. So what else is involved then in business? Our revenue. What is our revenue from um, generating, so revenue from generating X units. So remember what revenue is. Revenue is just the amount of money that I actually bring in. Okay, so revenue is the amount of money that I bring in. That does not, that's not our profit, remember, because our revenue doesn't consider costs. So that goes to our next function, which is the profit function. And this is, we are going to define the profit function to be the revenue. That's how much money I bring in from selling my t-shirts. But I have to take away the amount of money that I put in to actually make the t-shirts because no one's going to make them for me for free. And so this is the profit. And then um, in here, let's say maybe not always a profit, maybe a loss. I don't know why people wouldn't want to buy my math or math is fun t-shirts, but maybe they won't. So maybe I get a loss. Maybe my cost, when would I get a loss? When my costs outweigh my revenue. So this is the profit or loss generated. Okay, by producing and selling X units, X of my shirts. So these are pretty important functions, especially for you people that are business people going to be business people. You know, I, I really just like looking at the math of this. I'm not a business person by trade, um, but uh, it's interesting to look at the math and how this relates to business. So um, one thing that we, we need to kind of uh, chat about here is that another way that I can describe revenue, and you saw this in the book, but revenue is also can be described as X times P. Now this is a lowercase P, not, a, not an uppercase P, so sometimes I will kind of make it like a fancy P to make sure you understand that that is a lowercase P. And what this is, this is going, the revenue, this is the revenue from selling or generating or selling either way, X units, right, at a price, a price ooh, of P. Okay, so that's the price that I am going to look to sell my. So you know, if I have a hundred T-shirts and I want to sell them for twenty dollars each, then that would be how much would I make? I would make a hundred T-shirts times twenty dollars per T-shirt. If you want to think of the units on these, this is shirts. Um, I would, you know, I would make two thousand dollars on that. So that this is going to be important for us. Anytime it's going to ask us for a revenue function here, or anytime we need to bring in a revenue function. Um, then I want I want to take X times whatever P is. Now this can be this P right here can be fixed or it can vary. Okay, so I might have P might be twenty dollars per shirt, or maybe P will vary, right? Because if you think about this, um, if you think about this, you know our price. will really be determined by how many we want to sell. So another idea, and, and you probably saw this in your book, is that sometimes we can think if this P right here is actually a function of X, what we, what we describe this to be, if this varies, if P varies, our price varies. Basically what we think about this is this is the highest price I can charge in order to sell X units. So, you know, if I want to sell 
100 t-shirts, what this is saying is if I want to tell 100 t-shirts but people won't pay 20 bucks, I may have to vary that 20 based on how many t-shirts I really want to sell. So a lot of times what we're going to see is that this P right here is going to be a function of X. And they actually call this in your book the demand equation. Um, so that demand equation helps us find our total revenue. So let's do a couple examples here and we're going to, again, this is an application. So we are going to look at, well, how, how, how do we apply this? How do we talk about maximums and minimums? So here's our first, our, well, really our only example for this section. And then I want you to look at the examples in the book. And of course, contact me if you have questions. So we have an office supply company in this example, of course. Okay, sells X markers, okay, per year for P dollars per marker, okay, and then the demand equation or the price equation, so the demand equation Um, for these markers, is given by, so here's my demand equation, P equals, again, demand equation or price per marker, okay, but that's my demand equation, 10 minus 0 0.001x, okay, and you notice um, if I want to sell more markers, this number is going to get smaller, okay? If I want to sell, you know, hypothetically zero markers, that's a little silly, but I would charge $10 per marker. Now, what does that mean? That means that that $10 is too much to charge for a single marker. So if I only want to sell zero, if I want to sell zero markers, I should charge $10 per marker because you're not going to get that. So I hope that makes sense. If I want to charge, you know, look at really quick, if I want to sell a thousand markers, this is my demand equation, right? So I would have 10 minus, if I multiply that, I picked a thousand because it was easy. I would want to sell each marker for $9, okay? So that's what that makes, that makes sense. Usually these demand equations, this is a linear demand equation and you can see that it has negative slope. So sometimes we can actually figure out what these demand equations are. Um, so your example in the book, I think example three, gives an example of how to find that demand equation assuming it's a linear demand equation. Okay, so we have a couple questions here. Let's start with part A for this example. Um, what price should the company charge per marker, okay, um, in order to maximize revenue? That would be a good thing, I think. Maximizing profit would be the best, so don't worry, we're going to get there. Um, maximize revenue, and then also what is the max revenue? Okay, so we're going to go, again, remember, what is revenue? Revenue is the number of markers that I want to sell times the price or the demand. And so in this case, I'm just going to take X times 10 minus 0.001X. And then I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. So I would get 10X minus 0.001X squared. Notice again, what are we asking? We're asking, what is the maximum? Hey, we just spent like three sections, okay, two sections, talking about how to find maximums. So, well, yeah, I guess almost three. R primed then, let's take the derivative. That would be 10 minus 0.002x. And let's set that sucker equal to zero, right? That's where I know a maximum is going to um, occur. So let's see, what, what do we get here? So if I add that over, so 10 equals 0.002x. And then now I'm gonna divide by 0.002. And we get, it looks like 5,000. 
So again, it's important to understand what this 5,000 means. So that's great if you can find 5,000, but if you don't understand what that means, then we're not going to we're not going to get any, we're not going to understand our problem here. So again, let's make sure really quick, you need, so I'm, I'm on working on grading your homework and you guys need to show me that you know this is a maximum. So I need to see a quick derivative test. Let's just put r primed here. If we put in zero here, notice if I, 10 minus zero is positive. So that's going to be increasing. And then if I put in you know, oh, let's say 10,000, I would get 10 minus 0 0.002 times 10,000. I get a negative 10, so that's negative. So sure enough, this is a maximum. That's good. That's what I wanted to make sure I showed. Okay, so let's, let's talk about this. What price should the company charge per marker in order to maximize revenue? So what I know, remember what this is here. This is 5,000 markers. So that's not my answer. That's not what it asked for. It asked, what price should the company charge? So I'm going to take my P, my demand equation, which is 10 minus 0 0.001, and I'm going to multiply that by 5,000. And I can do that in my head, I think. I believe that would be $5. So this is $5 per marker, and your answer should be in a sentence. So you would say, the company should charge $5 per marker in order to maximize revenue. And then what is the maximum revenue? Well, what I would do then with that 5,000 is I'd put that into this equation. So R of 5,000, if I plug that in, right, into this equation right here, good, you know, just thank the math gods that you live in a time where there were our calculators. I know I do because I had calculators growing up. I'm not that old. Not that you're old if you didn't. <laughs> but what is my maximum revenue we're going to get on these markers? Our maximum revenue is $25,000. Okay? I want to ask another question about this, um, about this one. So let's look at, so part B, this is the same example. Oops. Okay, so part B, the same example, and then we'll, we'll call it good. So part B is asked, let's say, if the cost function, this is the same example. So let's say that the cost function for this example is given by C of X, okay, is going to equal $5,000. So that's like a setup cost plus 2x. So this tells me it's set up, I have to set it up 5,000 bucks just to set up my marker making factory and then I'm gonna, you know, it'll cost me about two dollars per marker, okay? So remember my revenue, well, let's just, let's just keep talking here. Um, so the question here is what is the company's? So what do we, I mean, we're, it's important to get revenue up, but what is the company's maximum profit, right? Because my maximum profit might not necessarily occur at 5,000 markers because once I, I remember, I might make the most money, right, when I sell 5,000 markers, but I have to, then I have to spend the money to make 5,000 markers. So we don't know if the payoff is going to be worth it, okay? So what is the company's maximum profit? And then let's ask one other question here, and then we'll actually do this one. Oh, come on. What should the company, um, so my, what should the company charge? Oops. What should the company charge per marker? Um, and how many markers should be produced? So this is basically asking, you know, of course we want to maximize profit. Um, and how many markers should be? Okay, so that's our question here. All right, so what do we know? We know from before that profit equals our revenue minus our cost. So I am just going to take our revenue from this last one. Okay, what was that? Oops, wrong layer. What was our revenue function? 10x minus 0.001x squared. All right, and I am going to 
put this in. So my profit then, which was 10x minus 0.001x squared minus my cost, making sure to put parentheses because I'm subtracting, wow, that zero went a little crazy. I'm subtracting more than one term, or just make sure that negative goes through. You don't have to show me every single step if you don't want to, but make sure you don't, you know, just be cautious of subtracting more than one term. So I get a negative 0.00x squared, and then if I take 10x minus 2x, that's plus 8x, and then it's minus 5,000. I kind of like writing it in descending order there. Again, I want maximum profit. So what do we do again? We're going to take the derivative. Isn't this lovely? The derivative then is a negative 0.002x plus 8. I'm going to set that sucker equal to 0. Okay, and so when I solve for this, I'm just going to do that really quick, we get 4,000. So this is interesting, right? I'm interested. Are you interested? This is 4,000 markers. So my revenue, correct, my revenue told me that I to maximize revenue, it said I need to make 5,000 markers, but to maximize profit, I need to make 4,000. That's because of that difference in the amount of cost. If you look at this, this is this function right here, this is a linear function that has a positive slope. So what happens here is maybe this is my, rev my revenue is a parabola facing down, right? So maybe this is my revenue function. And then this possibly, uh, I want to make sure I get this quite right. Um, my, my cost function, so maybe looks something like, Let's say like this. I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. So what is my profit? My profit is the difference between these two, the difference. So even though my revenue reaches its maximum value right here, just a little bit below it is where I actually find the largest distance. I want this yellow line to be the biggest it possibly can. And my graph's not perfect here. But what, again, I think I say this all the time, what in life is. Um, notice, ah, that was not very good. <laughs> um, what is it? notice that that line is a little bit smaller and remember this get this yellow line right here that is my profit so again um, I got a little excited there and I should probably finish my example here with the 4,000 I want to make sure that I test that and make sure that gives me a positive or excuse me a, a max if I put this in if I put in zero I get a positive Let's say I put in 10,000, that would be a negative, you know, 20 plus 8, which is a negative. So I'm positive and then negative. So sure enough, we have a maximum. So what is the country, company's maximum profit? So I would just take P and I would evaluate that at 4,000. That would give me, and just for time's sake, I'll let you do that. That will give me the maximum profit. Okay, and then what, what other questions do we have? What should the company charge per marker? Well, so remember, it's going to look a little crazy. Um, if I look at what was, how, how much, this right here was the price per marker. So this says to take 10,000 minus 0.001x. And if you did that, what you'll see, so this is my little p, not my big p, of 4,000. This says to charge $6 per marker. Okay, and then how many markers should be produced? Obviously, we just found that we should produce 4,000 markers to maximize profit, not markies, markers. <laughs> um, I hope that makes sense. This is, this is some pretty cool stuff because it's the actual business part, and it's kind of cool to see the applications of um, how you can just use derivatives. I mean, really, what did, what did we really do here? Where is the actual calculus? Show me the calculus, right? The actual, the only real calculus we did was all of this stuff here, and it was pretty simple, but it tells us quite a bit about um, how we can use simple derivatives to determine where I could have my maximum profits, maximum revenues, stuff like that. As always, please contact me if you have any questions, and enjoy.